Today, I'm gonna to be doing the Koros running fitness test to see where my running fitness is currently at before I jump into my 12 week half marathon training plan with the hopes of setting a new PB in the half marathon in May. But before I get into what the running fitness test actually is, we need to jump back into the past to yesterday to see where my running fitness is currently at. All right, welcome to the past. It's Friday the 2nd of February and I wanted to go over the Koros training hub the day before I do this running fitness test to look at some baseline metrics for for my current fitness and see how they update after I run the fitness test. So first we'll look at running fitness. Koros mentions that this is an Evolab fitness model which ranks where your running fitness is at. And as you can see, there's a table below that looks at where your number is for running fitness will equate to what Koros believes you can do in the marathon. And as you can see here, the running fitness test will help you get a more accurate model of your fitness. So as we can see when looking at my running fitness currently it's ranked at a 91 which going back to that running fitness table 85 to 95 is a 330 to a 245 in the marathon for the male 91 gets me roughly close to probably that three hour threshold which we'll look at the race predictor in a second another thing to look at really quick i'm uh, pretty much fully recovered so i should be good for tomorrow's running fitness test it's not like i'm going to be in a fatigue state where that may affect the overall results of the running fitness test test and the results I get from it. And then the last thing I wanna look at, the race predictor. Now, the race predictor is based off of what runs I've done so far. I haven't really done any crazy speed work, but I originally put in my 308.56 PR for the marathon, and then the race predictor has adjusted based on the runs I've done since I put that in. The one thing I am curious about with the race predictor, as well as this running fitness, where I'm at with the 91, I'm actually pretty sure that Koros has me spot on with where my fitness is currently at. So there's a chance that doing the running performance test tomorrow may actually negatively impact some of these numbers based on how my heart rate responds to the overall running fitness test and then how I hold up with each of these paces. I do have a feeling that this may adjust my running fitness potentially negatively or I'll see negligible variations. I don't really expect to see much, but we will have to go back to the future to see where I'm actually at with all of these metrics after completing the running fitness test. So the first question is, what is the Koros running fitness test and who is it best for? The running fitness test is a way to test your current running fitness in one workout by hitting multiple pace ranges in that workout. And it's best for those who are either new to running or you're coming back from a long period of rest or no real training like I am, or you're coming back from an injury and you wanna see where your current base fitness is at, as well as set metrics across a multitude of pace ranges. Now, the benefit of the running fitness test is that you hit multiple pace ranges as I've mentioned where you may not be doing those pace ranges in your current training as you build back up to full fitness and so the running fitness test gives you a snapshot to help fill in the picture that may be incomplete because you're doing mostly easy runs not really hitting that marathon pace 10k pace or 5k pace so doing the Koros running fitness test is pretty simple in your watch you go to the running fitness test and then it'll ask you for a recent 10k time I'm setting mine at 39 minutes and then the running test will actually begin Again, there is a five minute warm up followed by round one, which is 25 minutes at your marathon pace. So, the set marathon pace it gives you based on the 10K time you provided. And then you go into round two, which is three minutes of 10K pace. And then round three, which is three minutes at 5K pace. Now, there is an optional round four and round five. The only way round four and round five will happen is if for some reason in the 5K pace, so that three minutes at 5K, you do not hit 90% of your max heart rate reserve then you will kick into an optional fourth round where you'll do three minutes at a slightly faster pace than 5K. And if for some reason, again, you do not hit that 90% or greater of your max heart rate reserve, you'll go into a round five. So three minutes at a slightly faster pace than that slightly faster pace of your 5K. Honestly, the only way you should not be hitting your 90% of max heart rate reserve or higher would be that you somehow put in the wrong 10K time, so a time that's too slow. And in that case, it won't paint an accurate picture of where your actual base fitness is at currently. Now, there are a few things I wanna note really quick about the running fitness test. Coro suggests that you do the running fitness test on a flat surface. That's why I'm here at the track today. They wanna make sure there's no variables that make the metrics from the running fitness test inaccurate. Another thing about the running fitness test, these should be done every three months, but you should not do the running fitness test too close to a big race. And then lastly, Coro does suggest that you do a few resting heart rate tests prior to doing this running fitness test 
to ensure that you have an accurate measurement of where your resting heart rate is so that your max heart rate reserve is accurately set. And then the last thing before I actually get into the running fitness test, you actually can fail this running fitness test and the only way you can fail it is if whatever your minimum heart rate threshold is for the test, if your heart rate at any time drops below that, it automatically fails the test. So at any point within, I believe round one, two or three, if your heart rate drops below whatever that minimum threshold is, so let's say it's 130, if you hit 129 BPM at all in the running fitness test, then you automatically fail the running fitness test and you'll have to repeat it. All right, so now that I've explained everything that there is to the running fitness test, the only thing left to do is actually run the test. So I'm currently in the five minute warm up I have about two and a half minutes left current heart rate is a 147 and for those of you who are curious about how accurate will these metrics be for my running fitness test I am wearing the Coros heart rate monitor to ensure my heart rate is as accurate as possible throughout this entire test I'm also wearing the Coros pod 2 to ensure my pace and distance are as accurate as possible and I have my pace 3 watch set to track mode lane 1 so in terms of the results I get for this running fitness test the metrics should all be extremely accurate in showing where my base fitness is at currently. All right, round one, here we go. 25 minutes at marathon pace. I'm about seven minutes into the running fitness test. I was hoping it would knock off mile markers to let me know where I was at or at least what the lap pace was. But so far, no laps have been provided. So I think it's just 25 minutes straight, trying to stay in that 715 to 634 pace range. 10 minutes in and I'm already feeling it. I'm not looking forward to the 10K and 5K portion. I greatly overestimated how fit I would be <laughs> for this test. All right, round two of the 10K starts now. Round three of the 5K starts now <laughs> i'm now on the five minute cooldown. i have to walk i'm, I'm completely spent oh, that was hard that last three minutes at the 5k absolutely brutal oh i am destroyed i'm literally i don't even know how i finished that oh that was rough five minute cooldown is all that's left and then i'm done i need to start jogging again <laughs> Just finished the cool down. It says I did 5.90 miles with a 657 minute mile average. It took me 41 minutes and one second. The schedule calls for eight miles, so I will finish to eight miles really quick. And then we'll head back to the house to go over all of the data with this running fitness test to see if I've improved at all with my base fitness or if things have stayed the same. And now we're even a little further into the future as it is Monday, the 5th of February. And I wanted to jump really quick into the metrics for both the running fitness test as well as looking at the Coros training hub to see if there was any improvements to my running fitness. As you can see, my threshold pace is now a 613. It was a six minute, 18 second minute mile prior to doing this test. So my threshold pace did improve. My lactate threshold is now 178. And then my personal max heart rate went from 193 to 198. And then if we look over here at the graph of the actual run, you can see that my pace was in the 820s to start off through the first mile. My heart rate started pretty quickly into that 144 up into the 150s, kind of hovered around 148 to 152 in the warm up as I picked up the pace. And then you can see the clear delineation between when the warm up ended at that five minutes, so four minutes, 52 seconds here. You can see I'm running a 705 minute mile pace, 156 BPM. And then I moved into steady run one. And as you can see, my heart rate was roughly the 160s to 170s through here. And for most of the the run I was hitting, I would say 640, so low 640s and mid 640s all the way down into the 630s. So as you can see here, like 628, like I was definitely dipping a little before 634 and there was moments where I had to pull myself back. Of this entire run, the 25 minutes at this marathon pace, so that 715 to 634 was the easiest part of this run, if you want to say that. Like I was pretty steady throughout this entire run and felt like I could have actually held the 25 minutes or this pace for longer than the 25 minutes. Even though I did state that, yeah, like 10 minutes in, I was starting to really feel it. I was feeling it, but at no point did I feel like it was too much. Whereas when I jumped into the 10K and the 5K, 
things changed a little bit. So as you can see, going through the paces, really started to lock into more of that 630 pace throughout. And then once the 25 minutes were done, again, you can see a clear delineation where I ended with like roughly a 631 minute mile at 173 BPM for the heart rate. And then jumping into the 10K portion, so three minutes at that 10K pace, which was a 634 to 554 minute mile. You can see immediately my heart rate jumps up into the 180s, but it was still staying pretty low. 180, 182, 183 is pretty much where it stayed for the entire three minutes of the 10K. This is where it started to get hard or harder. As you can see, I was roughly holding a 552. So I was trying to, with this test, to hold near the um, top end of the paces that were suggested. So here with the 634, I was trying really hard in those 20 25 minutes to be up in that 630 to 640 range. Here, same thing. I wanted to be in that like 550 range. And then as you can see, moving up into the 10, uh, 5K, here's where there's not as clear of a delineation. And I will say that the 5K of the three portions of this running fitness test, the 5K was the most difficult to like really turn up the speed and get closer to, as you can see here, the 554 to 530 pace range. Like I caught myself dipping into the sixes for a hot second and had to like really like lock back into that focus and pick it up. And partly that was just starting to really feel the fatigue. I was starting to feel lactic acid build up in my legs to the point where it was getting really heavy. The leg turnover felt really heavy. And these last three minutes were very difficult. And then as you can see, here's this dip where I had walked because I just was really, really feeling it. And then if we look really quick at the averages, just to get an idea of what the averages were for each lap, five minute warm up, you see 801 minute mile, average heart rate was 145. Test two, we are looking at that 25 minutes, a 646 minute mile average with a 170 average heart rate. And then if we go into round two, which is the 10K pace, looking at a 557 minute mile average and a 181 average heart rate, 549, still a good, like minute mile second gap between the average pace of the 10k at that 557 to the average pace of the 5k at that 549 minute mile average and then the cool down you're looking at an 856 with the average heart rate back down to that 156 so with that let's look at the coros training hub to see if there was any improvements in my running fitness and so as you can see my running fitness when we looked at it last it was a 91 it is now a 93 and across the board for base endurance speed and sprint you can see these all improved as well i'm not actually sure if sprint improved. I'd have to go back and watch the footage from Friday <laughs> to see if sprint improved because I'm pretty sure it was in the 91s as well. And again, the sprint, I'm not so worried if that improves because for half marathon marathon, you're looking at more of that base and endurance. That's what you want to improve. To see an improvement from 91 to 93 is great because I was expecting this to actually maybe have a negative impact on my overall running fitness because of where my running fitness is at and the fact that I've only really done easy runs and I am in the base building phase as I build up my running fitness. I was worried that, again, my heart rate was going to react negatively to that 10K and 5K stimulus in this running fitness test. And then I would have it basically affect the base and endurance and speed a little more on the negative. And last but not least, the last thing I highlighted on Friday was the race predictor. So as you can see, the 5K, I think there's like a slight improvement in the 5K, if I remember correctly. The 10K, also a slight improvement, negligible at best. The half marathon saw an improvement as well. I believe it was at 125 on Friday, and now it's at a 123.50. So again, not a great improvement, but marginal, which is expected and considering, like I said, I'm in the base fitness, the most surprising of them all and probably the most generous of the race predictions is the half marathon at 253.56 for a 638 minute mile. I probably could have held that pace for a half marathon. Now the marathon, could I hold a 638 over 26.2 or 42 kilometers? Probably not, but the half, 10 and five, I think those are a little more spot on in terms of where my fitness is currently at and what I could probably perform if I were to go do one of those races today. And so with that, I'm happy to say that I did see improvements in my overall running fitness. If you're looking to do this running fitness test for yourself, my one tip would be just be prepared to run hard for the entire time. Like I said, if you predict your 10K time correctly for the running fitness test, by the time you hit round three and you're running those 5K paces, you should really be feeling it, but just stay locked in and run hard until you finish out that last three minutes. And who knows, maybe you'll get a running improvement like I did and get a prediction for a 253 marathon.